The Golden State Warriors just beat the team with the best record in the NBA by nearly 20 points. And they did that without their second best player even playing. I think it's pretty safe to say the Dubs are still a very, very legitimate contender. And some people might think this is a one-off, but it couldn't be further from the case. Because over the last 17 games, the Warriors have the fifth best winning percentage in the league. But it gets better. Because in two of those games, they lost because they had to rest their starting lineup. If you exclude that, they've gone 11-4 when healthy, which would be the third best winning percentage in the league over that period of time. This is without even mentioning that the starting lineup has the best net rating of any lineups in the league. Not the Celtics, not the Bucks, but the Warriors starting lineup is still number one and by some distance. But just forget about that for a second. They just comfortably beat the most informed team in the league. The exact same team that smashed those frauds in Phoenix just a few days prior couldn't handle the dubs. And it's stuff like this that still makes the Warriors practically impossible to guard. Steph gives the ball to Draymond, and the Warriors guards go to work. Poole tries to initially set a screen to free up Curry, but Brogdon does well, so Looney hands it off to Poole and sets a screen. This is where Curry continues running to create a perfect opening for Clay, who gets a Draymond off-ball screen and cuts right through the gap. This right here is why the Warriors remain a serious title contender. There is not a single player in that starting lineup that doesn't know exactly what to do at every stage of that play, and many other actions that they run on a nightly basis. But what might be an even bigger deal is there's a couple of guys off the bench that seem to be figuring things out as well. I mean, Jason Tatum had to find that out the hard way. Kaminga calling for it. Look at a post up Tatum. Five on the shot clock. The spin move leans in. Blocked by Tatum. Kaminga gets it back and throws it down. But it's way more than just a poster dunk for JK. Over the last handful of games, Kaminga is fitting his role so much better. And Steph acknowledged that. Kaminga, you've seen obviously a lot from him in the last few games. What you see is different from him when you're on the floor with him as opposed to like a month ago. A focus on defense, a focus on energy and just outworking people, using his athleticism, his God-given abilities, you know, just being decisive about the simple play. And it's just plays like this that he's excelling at now. Here he gets the ball from Clay on a kick out. JK hands it off to Steph and that sets a perfect pick before rolling. Then just as the second defender approaches, he drops off a perfect bounce pass to a cutting lamb. Or how about this play on defense where Kaminga effortlessly switches from Alexander Walker to Clarkson before absolutely clamping him with great defensive footwork and anticipation, which led to a pretty funny moment as well. Although it might be a little bit more than just a funny moment. I think some of the aggression Kaminga has shown recently is exactly the kind of energy the Warriors have needed, attacking the rim, being physical defensively, and even talking some trash. When your second year player is doing that, it's hard not to be energized as a team, and as a second unit, they've gone from clearly the worst in the league to now being serviceable, which is making all the difference. But do you guys want to hear a quick stat before we talk more about how the Warriors picked apart the Celtics? Who do you think has made the most three-pointers over the last 15 games of the season? If you guessed Steph Curry, well, congratulations, you win absolutely nothing because that was obvious. But who do you think has made the second most three-pointers in that period of time? If you guessed his splash partner, you were also correct because Klay Thompson is shooting over 42% on 10 attempts a game the last 15 games of the season. These were Clay's shooting splits to start the season, and these have been his shooting splits ever since. He is now taking and making more threes than he has at any point in his career. And we saw this aggression against the Celtics with one particular part of his game standing out, his mid-range game. Some of the one-legged shots Clay takes, yeah, a little bit questionable. But what is great is when he does stuff like this. Kaminga sets an off-ball screen to get Clay going downhill. And with Griffin playing deep drop coverage, he gets an easy look, which wasn't the only time Clay or the Warriors took advantage of what the defense was giving them. Because we all know if you play drop coverage against Steph Curry, that's a little bit of a recipe for disaster. Because, well, Looney sets a dribble handoff for Steph Curry, who comes around 
and knocks it down with a clear sight at the rim, whilst Brogdon hacks him from behind for the four-point play. And with Clay, JP, and Wiggins starting to look so much better offensively, that has been huge in releasing some pressure off Steph. Because to start the season, this is what Steph had to do just to win games narrowly against bad opponents. He was putting up my career type numbers just to scrape over the line against average teams. Now all of a sudden, he only needs to score like 28 to 30, which we know Steph can do that on any given night. But with all of this being said about the offense and Clay getting back to his best, the most impressive part of the Dubs performance wasn't the offense, it was the defense. Starting the season, the Celtics have had the best offensive rating in league history. They've been knocking down shots at will. The Warriors kept their offensive rating to 102 in this game, which for reference is a lower average than the 30th ranked offense in the league, the Charlotte Hornets this season. With no surprises that Draymond Green was a major reason for this, with him playing fantastic isolation defense against Jalen Brown and whoever else he switched onto, but then also causing a mess with his active hands and rim protection. And the Celtics game was just a reflection of how well Draymond has been playing over this recent stretch of basketball, because the dubs have gone from having the third worst defense to start the season, to now being a top six defense since that point, which still isn't truly reflective of how good they've been, because in the two games Draymond missed, they gave up 250 points. 250 points. Basically, they are back to being a truly elite defense, which has always been the case whenever the Warriors have been a contender. And whenever you think Draymond might be slowing down, he just gets back to his best defensively. I don't know how he keeps doing it, but he does. And another reason for the Dubs' improved defense over this stretch has been the bench performing as well. I mentioned JK, but how about Dante DiVincenzo? If you just looked at his box score numbers, you would think he's a scrub. Like, let's, let's be honest. If you looked at his stats, you would think he is a bad NBA player. But defensively, he's been really active. Like on this play where he picks Brogdon up, but to cause a little bit of confusion, Brown comes around for a fake dribble handoff, which freezes DiVincenzo for a second. However, he does well enough to get back to the spot before perfectly contesting straight up. Offensively as well, he's a lot better than the numbers would suggest. His playmaking and ball handling has been a very, very welcome addition for the Warriors. And that success Kaminga is now having definitely is in part to DiVincenzo now providing a little bit of playmaking, that additional ball handling alongside Paul, and creating opportunities for the likes of Kaminga when he collapses the defense and finds him cutting to the rim or even sometimes spotting up in the corner. With that being said, the Warriors look good again. If you could drop a like on the video, that would be much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel for more. Have a great day. Bye.